Hey guys, welcome to a new setup here in the studio. And in this video, we are talking about the Aperture 300D Mark II. Now in this video, there's a couple of things I want to accomplish. I want to briefly go over the new specs of this light. Then I want to talk about whether or not you should buy this. And to do that, I want to compare this Mark II with the original Mark I of the 300D. We'll also talk about the 120D. So if you're shopping for a large chip light like these from Aperture, you'll have a good idea of what you should go for. I also want to show you guys how to take full advantage of bright lights like this and why I think you should swing for a giant light like the 300D. And we're going to go through several setups and some stuff that you might not have thought of before. So we'll get to all that in this video. But first, I want to very briefly go over the specs of this. So let's start with the new head on this light. It is completely redesigned. It is significantly heavier is the first thing I noticed. So cooling is better. Build quality pretty much of this whole kit is impeccable. We're talking rental quality in my opinion. So we've got the new head, a new yoke. So now we can do a 360 degree spin. The knob on the side of the head is also new to the 300D. It's the same one that's on the 120D. It's got a brake, so it works really, really well. Very, very strong. And when it comes to this new dish on the front of the light, Aperture has redesigned it so we have more output, but it does have a narrower beam. So around 55 degrees compared to the old model. I think it's really cool that they've added this as an option, but I have found a couple issues with it. While it is significantly brighter in the center, there is definitely a hot spot, and it's very noticeable just by looking at it. And when you bring a meter into the game and read this light, you'll notice from the center to the edge, there's a big difference. So while it's really cool that this is an option and you can use it, I still think I'll end up using the old dish more because it's a more even light. And I think overall, it's just a nice wide you know, beam for doing kind of bounce work. And we'll be comparing all the different dishes and lights here in a little bit if you want to learn more about that. Now let's turn our attention to the brand new controller. I'll go ahead and fire up the light here. That's 1% right there. And what's amazing about this new controller is they've combined everything together. So the old 300D had multiple parts multiple cables. With this guy, if you're using a battery, it's one cable from the head unit to the actual controller. On the left and right, we've got some V-mount adapters or gold mount, depending on which model you purchase. And this is a very well-balanced, small, compact setup. And what's great is on one of these V-mounts, you can use a single battery, and you're essentially going to have a 120D fixture. So if you don't need tons of output, you can put a nice little 90 watt hour battery on this guy and you're good to go. Aperture really thought out this unit when it comes to the ergonomics as well as its function. Down to little things like a USB power output on the side of the unit. It mounts very securely with a new system, kind of like a super clamp onto the stand. So satisfying to use that. The construction, again, we're talking rental house quality. So if I'm owning a rental house, I would probably buy a boatload of these things because the return on investment is going to be incredible in my opinion. There's other crazy features with this guy. It has a really handy, well-made little strap if you wanna hang it from light stand or just carry it around. And it even has little feet if you wanna lay it on the floor. Ergonomics aside, this thing also has a ton of power when it comes to the operating system. It's kind of a small computer in this thing. So you'll notice there is a dial for not only operating our output, but it also has a menu button. So if we go in here, we have a ton of options, including fan speed, turning it on and off, changing the curve of the actual knob when it comes to outputs. So you can do kind of an S curve, a linear curve, and other options there. Things like studio mode, Bluetooth options, which we'll get to in a second, DMX options, and several other options. Another cool thing about this unit is it has effects built in. So you don't need any apps to operate effects on this light you can just jump into the lighting effects mode. I'll go ahead and do that by holding down the effects. We can go to explosion or change to different modes, including paparazzi. There we have a nice flash. Uh, we can go to fireworks. Very, very nice. Fault bulb, lightning, TV, if you want to kind of a, do a TV gag very easily. Pulsing, strobe, excuse that for those who have eye flicker brain stuff. And then you hold the button again to go back to the standard dimming mode. So lots of options, all without having to do anything with your phone. But that brings us to the biggest thing that this controller and this new system is bringing to Aperture's light line, and that is the Citus Link system. So essentially, this light and several future Aperture lights, and even some of their old models, which you know we'll learn more about in future videos, 
can connect to the new Cytus system. And essentially, this is a Bluetooth mesh network. You're able to control the light from your phone, as well as create scenes, uh, several different like lighting animations, essentially, all while your lights are connected together and it's over Bluetooth. So no more creating a router network on your device and having to use your phone only with that Wi-Fi router, essentially. You are able to come and go as you please, but your lights and the network stay the same. So the beta for iOS is available now. Android is coming soon. And uh, the system is going to grow as we see RGB fixtures and more stuff come from Aperture. A couple final notes before we jump into how to use these lights and some actual tests here. When it comes to fan noise, you can still hear the head, uh, but it's overall a more quiet system. The old 300D was very loud. The power supply was noticeably loud. You had to move it to a different room. This guy, no problems there at all. And finally, if you pick up this kit, you will also receive a case, which is incredibly well made. And of course, all of this is coming in at a price of eleven to $1,200, depending on where you pick up your 300D Mark II. So with that out of the way, is this thing worth it? Should you buy this or should you buy the discounted version one of the 300D or skip the whole 300D thing altogether and get a 120D, which is a phenomenal light? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons and see what's happening with each of these fixtures. Let's kick things off with the 300D Mark II and the new reflector. All the following tests are done at two meters from the light using a Sekonic Spectrometer C700. We're gonna start with the center measurement of this light. And I have mentioned there is a hot spot on this new reflector. So in the center, it is reading at 739 foot candles, which is just crazy. But if we take a look at the edge of this light and that reflector, we're getting a significant drop in foot candles. So this isn't really necessarily the best way to measure this light. So we're gonna switch over to using the old reflector for all the rest of the tests here we're getting 322 foot candles. If we jump over to the old 300D, you can clearly see it's losing a lot of that output. We're down to 253 foot candles. So with the new light, you're gaining all the features we talked about. And of course, output, the CRI is also one point higher. And on my unit for the new 300D, I had zero hue shift, but some other reviewers noticed they had 0.1 or 0.2 green. Now let's take a look at the 120D Mark II, same reflector, same test, and we're getting 184 foot candles. And last but not least, here's the specs for all three lights according to the tests I ran. And pretty much the 300D Mark II is better in every single way. CRI was really Really nice at 97.5 and the color temperature was kind of at an odd 54 but this is to be expected with daylight leds but now let's talk about lighting with these and why i think this light in particular but these bright high output lights are really awesome and you should consider picking one up a lot of times when people think of lights like this they're like you know what that's way overkill if i put a soft box on it you know, that's just a waste of light output. And in a way, you're right. If all you're going to do is put a soft box on one of these and stick it close to yourself just out of frame, this is a waste of money. Pick up the 120D or other fixtures like that in a light dome. That said, if you pick up this light and use it for larger setups, you can essentially use it as a 120D. But I'm going to show you a couple of setups where I think you might ditch the soft box altogether. Because we have so much output, we can do more with the light. So don't think in kind of one dimensional, I'm pointing the light at something and there's a lot of light. Think about what you can do with all of that output. So our first setup is going to be bouncing the light off of the ceiling and you get a huge spread, especially if you use the old reflector dish, you're gonna get a nice wide light source coming down and you'll be able to light several different people or a large scene like this. Because we have so much output, we're able to not point the light at us, but use that indirect bouncing. Now for a lot of setups, you're still going to have plenty of output. In fact, you might still have to dim the light down. Another way to use this light would be to switch over to a different reflector and we're still going to bounce it, but we're going to add some diffusion. So at this point, we are bouncing the light and then that bounced light is going through diffusion. You can't really do this with smaller lights. You need something that's got a ton of output to make that happen. And another setup that really shows how powerful these lights are is just a typical book light. So instead of bouncing off the ceiling, we're now bouncing off of some white surface and that's going through diffusion. And that's been the lighting setup I'm using mainly in this new studio. Once again, you need lots of output to make that happen and to make it work well. So here's what I think of this light at the end of the day and my final recommendations. 
If you're looking for the ultimate all around light and you don't need something super duper travel friendly, you're not gonna go wrong with this. It is very docile. You can drop it down to 1% and have just a little touch of light or it'll be a complete monster with uh, double batteries and a huge setup like we've talked about before. You can throw a light dome on this, one battery, and you essentially have a 120D. The new Citus integration is insanely powerful and that's just going to grow over time. The color quality is really good and the output of course is great. And the quality of this fixture is again, rental grade in my opinion. So unlike the original 300D, which was great, but had some pretty serious flaws, this light I can confidently recommend, and it's a light fixture that you can use for years and years and years to come without having any regrets having purchased it. I will say my biggest problem with this light is that it's not bicolor. We're here in 2019. I think Aperture should be looking into bicolor technology. Yes, that would kind of take away some of the output of this fixture, but it's 2019, guys. It's time to move on and to get into that bicolor game. So that's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video.